Keotaro is your typical NPC character who has no life ambition other than unleashing his inner Jack the Ripper. However, all that changes when he shockingly falls for Yamada, the class idol only to be thrown into the bottom of the friend zone, even though she secretly likes him. It's the first day of a new school term, and the emo wannabe Kiyotara is more or less annoyed with the attention his female classmates are giving him because of his injured arm. When the girls notice the cute dog keychain Kiyotara is wearing on his shirt, they immediately walk away not wanting to catch his terrible fashion sense. After they leave, Yamada tells him to count on her for anything he might need help with and goes to meet her friends. Later on, their class teacher asks Kiyotara to find someone he is close to in class to assist him since his right arm is in a cast. The man suggests Yamada, but Kiyotaro doesn't want to trouble her, so he tells the teacher that she is just his classmate and nothing more. He then walks into the classroom, but realizes he's messed up when Yamada looks at him in annoyance from beside the door before walking away. While the class was going on, he kept scolding himself for saying something so stupid, especially now that he and Yamada were closer. After the class, Kiyotaro decides to ask someone for notes since he hasn't finished writing his. He turns to his right and sees Yamada, but the look on her face makes him keep his mouth shut. Luckily for him, Adachi hands him his notes later on, saying that Yamada asked him to share them with him because her handwriting was chicken scratch. After school, Yamada sees Kyotaro approaching but ignores him, so he calls out to her and apologizes for what he said to the teacher. Having reconciled, the two walk home together and Yamada offers to carry Kyotaro's bag, which he reluctantly hands over to her before telling her not to talk to Adachi so much, but Yamada just teases him about his jealousy. The week progresses, and Yamada makes it her duty to help Kyotaro with everything like a loyal waifu. One day in class, Kyotaro overhears a conversation between Adachi and another classmate who showed him a pop star magazine. At first, Adachi thought the magazine was an adult one because, let's face it, his mind was as dirty as a garbage dump. But the boy shows him pictures of Yamada instead, much to Kyotaro's surprise. And when Adachi says he thought she was only a model, Kyotaro butts in and brags about how she wasn't only a model, but an actress and more. However, he quickly realizes that he'd said too much and turns away in shame but wonders if Yamada is going to be a pop star since her picture was in that magazine. As if hearing his thoughts, the boys ask the same question, and Adachi excitedly says, it will give them the chance to see her in sexy bikinis. The next moment, Yamada and her friends walk in, making him shut his mouth quickly. Later in the evening, Yamada and Kyotaro stop by the convenience store, and she picks up the same magazine the boys were looking at. She opens it to the place that has her pictures and tries to act like she's surprised, so Kyotaro pretends like he isn't interested in them. Yamada tries to return the magazine, but Kyotaro stops her before shyly saying he thought she looked nice in the pictures. So she decides to buy the magazine, and as they continue on their way, she asks which picture he likes best. He tells her he doesn't have a favorite, but we know better, and so does Yamada because she teases him about liking them all. He then points out that the pictures are different from her regular fashion magazines, which makes her stop and ask if he's seen the magazines. Realizing that he'd been caught in 4K, Kiyotaro tries to play it cool by saying he happened to see it because his sister had bought a fashion magazine. Yamada accepts his lame excuse and starts talking animatedly about how posing for fashion magazines is different, which makes him ask if she loves her job. She happily tells him she does, but Kiyotaro turns away as he tries to act like her smile isn't giving him butterflies. The next day, during their home economics class, Yamada tries to bring out her inner Sanji, but ends up breaking the eggs with so much force you'd think she had Superman's strength. At a nearby table, Hara asks Kiyotaro what he did during the winter break, and he tells her that he went to Akita. Before she could say more, Yamada joined them, so Hara asked her the same question she asked Kiyotaro, and she listed all the places she went to, including spending Christmas Eve with Kiyotaro. After this, she throws the question back at Hara, who tells her she went to a shrine on New Year's Day with Kanzaki. Yamada teases her for bringing up Kanzaki but insists on hearing how it went, so Hara tells her that he showed up with sideburns, looking like a failed Wolverine experiment. The teacher then asks them to cover their hair properly, and Yamada offers to help Kiyotaro do his. She pushes his hair out of his face and starts to laugh because he looks weird without the hair covering his eye, so he returns it to its original state. After a while, the food was ready, and Yamada picked up a fork to taste the pancakes before her, but the moment Achi mentioned that he made it, 
Kayata aided instead. As he lies to Adachi about liking it, Hara notices his keychain fall out of his pocket and picks it up before handing it over to him. Yamada takes it and gushes about how cute it looks, causing Hara to look at them suspiciously. Later on in the library, Kyotaro notices Yamada nodding off while holding a book for him, so he suggests they sit down for a while. He then shows her a picture of his sister, which she finds very cute, and when he tries looking for the pictures they took during the break, Yamada notices a blurry picture. She asks why he took a picture like that, so he explains that he accidentally took it when he fell. Immediately the words leave his mouth, and he regrets it because Yamada starts blaming herself for the injury, so he tries to convince her otherwise. The next day, when Yamada gets to class, she notices that her keychain is missing and begins to panic. But when Kyotaro asks about it, she tells him she left it at home. After school, he sees Kanzaki and Hara searching for something, and Hara tells him they are trying to find Yamada's keychain. Kyotaro immediately leaves school to search for it, but he has no luck until Moeko lets him know he's searching the wrong place as Yamada takes a different path home. He thanks her and heads in that direction to continue his search while braving the harsh weather. He soon meets Yamada, who tells him she has searched her house and still couldn't find the keychain. Kyotaro assures him that he will find it, and tries to comfort her as she starts to cry, but he notices the keychain hanging on a tree branch behind her, so he retrieves it, and Yamada thanks him. Having been out in the snow for too long, Kyotaro sneezes, so Yamada suggests he come to her house to warm up before heading home. At her house, she runs him a bath, and when Kyotaro steps into the bathroom, he tries to control his wandering thoughts. He quickly gets into the bath, but once again his mind starts to wander again so he decides to get out of the bath. However, he sits back down when he hears Yamada walk in after which she informs him that she has brought him a fresh set of clothes and put his wet clothes in a bag. After she leaves, Kiyotaro gets out of the bath and goes to put on the clothes but notices that his underwear is missing, which means he has to go commando. He dresses up quickly and tries to go find the bag with his clothes so he can retrieve his underwear but he stops in his tracks when Yamada's dog tries to jump him. Yamada comes in just then to ask which hot pot flavor he wants for lunch, but Kyotaro gets flustered because of how she's dressed. Like any hot-blooded male, his body reacts, but he tries to clear his mind by imagining himself as a castaway in the middle of a shark-infested water. However, the dog starts biting his trousers, causing Kyotaro to scream in surprise as it unintentionally tries to free his sausage from the confines of its incomplete prison. As he struggles with the dog to try and protect his pride, he falls head first into Yamada's melons, so she quickly pulls his trousers back up and scolds the dog. After putting his underwear back on, he notices that Yamada has changed clothes, so he asks why, and she tells him that she got it as a gift from Moeko, but never got to wear it. When she sits down next to him, she tells him that whenever her parents stay out late, she eats hot pots and then invites him to eat with her on one of those days. Instead of answering her, Kyotaro asks about the book she's holding, so she explains that it's her old yearbook, and Kyotaro notices that in all the pictures, she is eating. He then asks if she plays the piano when he notices it in the corner of the room, and she tells him that she played it for a while when she was growing up. She also tells him about the other activities she did while growing up, but had to drop because she has the attention span of a goldfish. However, she admits that the reason she dropped them was because she wasn't good enough, but says that her mother always allowed her to eat her favorite foods whenever she quit an activity. Yamada tells him that she sometimes feels she's inconveniencing the people around her with her behavior, and says she's worried that the people around her would grow to hate her because of it. Kyotaro tells her that if the people around her ever feel overwhelmed by her, they would let her know which prompts her to ask why he didn't come to the library for two days before the winter break. She soon starts crying as she tells him that she felt he was avoiding her then because she was overwhelming him. Kyotaro suddenly hugs her before explaining that he doesn't want to hurt her by saying how he truly feels, even though the real reason he avoided her is because he is scared of being hated by her. When they let go of each other, he tells her that her parents probably let her try new activities because they knew she would give it her best. With all the sappy emotional stuff behind them, Yamada notices a message from her mother informing her that she is on her way home. Yamada immediately starts panicking, and Kyotaro points out that he's wearing her clothes, so she pulls him along with her, and just as her mother opens the door, she locks Kyotaro in her room. Her mother notices the extra pair of shoes by the door, and Yamada tells her they belong to Chi. Inside her room, Kyotaro feels guilty for making her lie to her mother, 
and when she returns to the room, she tells him that her father will return soon. Kyotaro asks if her father is as cheerful and outgoing as her, but before she can respond, her mother walks in. Yamada hides Kyotaro under her blanket, and when her mother asks if he's all right, he pretends to be Chi. After she leaves, Kyotaro apologizes for making her lie to her mother, but she assures him that all is well. Suddenly, she pushes him down and straddles him, making both of them blush so hard because of how close they are. Eventually, she sneaks him out of the house, and just before he gets out of the elevator, he sees a hulk of a man who gives off some real serial killer vibes, which has him running for his life. The next day, his cast is taken off, and on his way to class, he meets Yamada and Chi. When Chi leaves, he gives Yamada her clothes, but when he tries to speak, he notices that his voice sounds strange, so he walks away. Later on, Kyotaro's class goes to the dojo, and Yamada realizes that her clothes smell bad. The teacher asks them to pair up and spar together, but uses Kyotaro to demonstrate the Oluchi Yari throw. After being used as an impromptu gym equipment, Kyotaro goes to spar with Yamada. She tells him that her clothes stink, but he doesn't seem to mind, so Yamada wipes the floor with his behind and tells him it's payback. When she walks away, Kanzaki approaches him, saying he noticed Kyotaro was close to Yamada. Kyotaro tries to explain that he only paired with her because she was ashamed of letting others notice her smelly clothes. But all the dim-witted boy heard was smelly, so he shook Kanzaki's hand and told him that smelly girls were the best. While changing clothes, Kyotaro wondered if Yamada would still be friends with him now that he was hitting puberty. He also believes that he has no chance of being with her because she has friend-zoned him. Later in the library, Kyotaro tells Yamada that he has a cracked voice, and she assumes he has a cold because of how much time he spends in the snow. However, he explains that it is because his voice is changing which seems to excite her because she says he's finally growing up. She then moves closer to him and tells him to make sure he says her name more often when his voice changes completely. Kyotaro is too stunned to speak at this point, but not because of what she asked of him. What has him speechless is the fact that he noticed her water balloons look bigger. A few days later, Kyotaro overhears Yamada and her friends talking about Valentine's Day, and he thinks to himself how he never cared about it. However, Moeko ropes him into the conversation as she tells Yamada it would be a good idea to make chocolates to hand out to guys. Yamada agrees, and suggests they use her house but looks right at Kyotaro when she says this, leaving him to wonder why on earth she'd invite him over to bake with her friends. On the proposed baking day, Kyotaro stands outside Yamada's building wondering if he should go in or not. He eventually makes up his mind when Chi and Serena arrive, and Chi asks why he is standing there like a wannabe stalker because of how he is dressed. He tells her that he's just passing by before he walks away, as he is confused as to why Yamada texted him the time to meet up, but her friends have no idea he was invited. Just then, Moeko notices him as she makes her way to Yamada's building and pulls him along with her before he can protest. When they get to Yamada's apartment, they greet her mother as she is standing close to the door. The woman is surprised to see Kyotaro and asks him how he knew her daughter, but Moeko saves him the trouble of responding by saying, he's her boyfriend. They move to the kitchen and start working on the chocolates, but Yamada chases her mother away when she starts asking Kyotaro questions. While she is away, Moeko asks the girls what Yamada's favorite food is, and she says she has no idea. She tells them that even though she's known Yamada the longest, some things about her are still a mystery. She gives an example of the first time she met her and tells them that she felt Yamada was a giant compared to her half-pint chibi self. She also says that Yamada cried because she wasn't able to spin a ball on her finger for a long time. Moeko points out that what she's saying has nothing to do with what kind of food Yamada likes, but the shortstop keeps talking and says Yamada sees her as her role model. Yamada and her mother soon return, and she makes her sit on the sofa instead of watching them like a hawk. Moeko then tells Kyotaro to address her with a nickname since they are playing pretend, but Serena seems to get annoyed by this and slams her hands on the table. Later on, Kyotaro is washing the mixing bowl when Yamada comes up to him and asks if he's having fun, but the look on her face tells him that any answer he gives would be used against him, so he excuses himself and goes to the bathroom. In the bathroom, he makes up his mind to leave, but before he can leave the bathroom, his imaginary friend, Nigorikawa, materializes and tells him not to be a wimp. He tells Kyotaro that he has to come clean to Yamada's mother, because if his ugly-ass self managed to date Yamada, her mother would see him as a two-timing jerk, who left Moeko to be with Yamada. Kyotaro argues that there's no hope of him, 
and Yamada ever becoming an item, so it didn't matter either way. He exits the bathroom and heads to the door, but Yamada's mother asks where he is headed. He tells her that he's leaving and turns to go, but stops before turning to face her again. He tells her that there is nothing between him and Moeko, and apologizes for lying after which he leaves. Outside the house, he crumbles to the floor in front of the door, but stands up when Yamada's mother comes to find him. Yamada immediately rushes out to stop her mother from speaking too much and asks Kiyotaro to stay when he tries to leave again. When they enter the house, they notice the scared looks on the girls' faces before noticing the giant of a man who is Yamado's father. Kyotaro freaks out too, but the man suddenly leaves the kitchen and goes into another room. Yamada apologizes to her friends for her father's behavior, and Kyotaro remembers meeting the man on the day she gave him her clothes. Just as he is praying the man doesn't remember him from that night, he notices him watching him from the dark room, just like Ryuk does from the shadows. Yamada notices him cowering and asks if he's okay, but before he can explain, her father joins them, making them jump apart. The man then stands in front of Kiyotaro, making him think he's done for, but to his surprise, he invites him to play video games. Yamada's mother apologizes to Kiyotaro for her husband's weird behavior, and Kiyotaro takes the control pad from him after hearing her father say, none of the girls played video games. She begins playing with her father, while Kiyotaro tries to understand what alternate universe he is in. When Moeko joins them, Yamada drops the pad and leaves with her mother. Moeko stays behind to speak with Kiyotaro, and when she notices Yamada's father looking very much like Eren Yurgar, after packing his hair in a man bun, she starts to swoon. With the chocolates ready, Yamada pulls Kiyotaro to the balcony and gives him a piece of chocolate to taste. He eats it and tells her that it's a bit sweet, so she takes it from him and eats it after, which she tells him she's glad he came. That night, Kiyotaro's sister screams when he tells her that he went over to Yamada's house to bake with her and her friends. She tells him that she's proud of him for trying to start his harem, but he scolds her for being dirty-minded. Just then, his phone rings, so he leaves to speak with Yamada, who asks him what he thinks of her parents. Kyotaro admits that he found them a bit scary, but later realized they were nice people. She tells him that her father kept referring to him as Yamada, making him realize that her father thinks that is his name, because he saw the name on the clothes he wore the night they met. After the call, he returns to the living room and joins his sister to drink some soda, but his sister suddenly asks when he plans on asking Yamada out, causing him to spit out the drink. He tells her that he doesn't know if Yamada likes him the same way, and admits that he's not very confident. His sister tells him not to worry too much because he is still growing up, and says that in the future, his feelings might change. Like a true simp, Kyotaro tells her he would only ever like Yamada, even if she wants nothing to do with him. His sister looks at him like he is on drugs when he screams into a pillow, saying he doesn't want Yamada to be with someone else. She then tells him that he has to decide what to do, and he admits he wants to date Yamada. The next day, Kyotaro is standing outside his classroom. When Kyotaro, a frowning Adachi, approaches him and starts complaining about obligatory chocolates, he says they need to be banned because they give ugly losers like him hope of love. Just as he keeps complaining, Moeko dumps some chocolate on Kyotaro's table, and all the boys, including Adachi, go to pick one up. Moeko tells Kyotaro that he can have the last chocolate, but Yamada picks it up and eats it before he can. Chi scolds her for doing so, but Yamada tells her that she identifies as a male for the rest of the day, so she's allowed to receive chocolate. The delusional Adachi then shows Kiyotaro his chocolate which had a nut shaped like a heart and says it was a declaration of love, making Moeko wish she hadn't given him any. Later on in the library, Yamada suggests playing shogi with chocolate, and even though Kiyotaro insists he doesn't know how to play, she makes him play with her. After a while, she tells him he has won and pushes the chocolates towards him, saying the winner takes all. Kiyotaro packed the chocolates in awe as this was the first time he'd received something like that. Before heading home, Yamada and Kiyotaro go to a convenience store and Yamada buys herself a chocolate bun. Outside the store, she asks what type of chocolate feels like a declaration of love to him, and he tells her that if the person giving the chocolates didn't outright say it, he wouldn't know. She then pushes her chocolate bun in his face and tells him he can have it, after he thanks her for it. She notices the chocolate stain on his cheek, so she reaches over and grabs his chin in a way that would make any girl swoon if the rolls were reversed, after which she uses her thumb to wipe the chocolate, leaving a heart shape before saying goodbye. Kyotaro runs back into the store, 
just as Yamada stops around the bend and holds up a cupcake before turning around. However, she meets Kiyotaro, who is on his way to find, so he hands her the chocolate he bought at the store. Yamada seems confused, so he explains that in class, she said she was a boy for the day and then paddled away. Later that night, as he rolls around in his bed regretting how he gave Yamada the chocolate, he receives a text and runs downstairs. Outside the house, he sees Yamada, and she tells him that she is taking her dog for a walk and decides to drop by. As they walk together, they stop by a vending machine, and Yamada decides to play a game by pressing two buttons together to see what drink she will get. When the drink comes out, she sees it is black coffee, so she hands it over to Kiyotaro instead. They find a bench to sit on, and she thanks him for the chocolate he gave her before asking if he received chocolates from anyone aside from his family. He tells her no, and asks if she gave chocolates to anyone, so she tells him that she didn't. She then asks if the drink is bitter, and he admits that he had lied about not liking sweets, which makes her pull out a cupcake from her bag. She breaks it in half and gives him one side before telling him that he is free to misunderstand her. The clueless boy doesn't seem to understand what she's saying, so they end up staring at each other for a while until Yamada starts to cry. Feeling guilty, he eats a piece of cake and says it tastes nice, so she asks him for a hug, which he gladly gives her. The next day, while they are cleaning the hallways, Adachi tells his friends that he doesn't know what to get Moeko for White Day. This makes Kyotaro wonder if he is also obligated to give Yamada something because she gave him chocolates. Adachi's friends remind him that the chocolate he received was an obligatory one, but he insists that since his own had a heart-shaped nut, it meant more. Chi tells Moeko to set things straight with Adachi, but instead, she eggs him on, saying he is allowed to interpret it however he wants. Adachi then tells his friends that he'd get her some handmade lingerie because she gave him handmade chocolates, proving his stupidity. Kanzaki then suggests an all-you-can-eat buffet, but when Kyotaro mentions that asking the girl out would be a problem, Adachi asks if someone gave him chocolates. Kyotaro confirms it, making Adachi say he is sure the girl is ugly simply because he is a hater. Later that evening, Adachi and Kyotaro run into an upperclassman named Nanjo, and Adachi asks him for gift ideas, so Nanjo tells Adachi to get lingerie, which makes the idiot happy. After he parted ways with Adachi, Kyotaro sees Yamada waving at him from a window, but doesn't wave back until Nanjo tries to wave at her. Yamada quickly shuts the window, leaving the two boys alone, so Kyotaro decides to admit his feelings for Yamada to Nanjo. However, before he can get the words out, Yamada runs towards them and pulls Kyotaro away. Some days later, while on their way home, Yamada hands Kyotaro her school bag as she searches inside it for a movie ticket. When she finds it, she tells him that a senior colleague gave it to her, and she wants to see it since it was almost out of the theaters. At the train station, she makes Kyotaro wear her cardigan and takes pictures of him. When he asks why she made him put it on, she tells him that he looks like a grown-up in it. Kyotaro turns to leave but stops when she puts her arms around him and pulls out another ticket. She gives him the ticket, and Kyotaro tries to convince himself that it's nothing more than a friendly gesture. Yamada starts walking away, but he holds her hand to stop her and awkwardly asks if she'd like to see the movie with him which she happily accepts. They get on the train, and Yamada apologizes for making him ask her out, but he assures her that everything is okay. When they get to the mall, Yamada pops open the first few buttons on his shirt, and Kyotaro starts feeling like they're high schoolers on a date. Just as he prays they don't run into anyone they know, Yamada suggests they get something to eat. Kyotaro decides to activate stealth mode and fly under the radar but he receives the shock of a lifetime when the takoyaki restaurant they stop at is the one his sister works at. After they take their seats, his sister tells him that even if she were to become wealthy, she'd never be caught dead wearing her school uniform on a date. She then brings them their order and teases Kyotaro for trying to act cool because she noticed his shirt. As they eat, Kyotaro watches his sister work, so Yamada asks why he's doing that. He explains that he's never seen anyone he knows working, so it was fascinating to see her working hard. Yamada then tells him she has a photo shoot scheduled for next Sunday and invites him to come watch her, so he agrees. She then takes the last takoyaki, but before she can eat it, Kyotaro stops her, saying she has to cool the inside first. He takes it and opens it up with his chopstick before blowing on it. As he wonders why he is doing this, he notices Yamada has opened her mouth and is expecting him to feed her. He is shocked by this, but awkwardly feeds her before he can chicken out. On their way out of the restaurant, they ask for their bill, but Kana tries to be the cool older sister and tells them that the bill is on her. At the cinema, 
Yamada asks Kyotaro if he watches a lot of movies, and he admits that he always falls asleep when watching them, so she tells him she will wake him up if he falls asleep. When the movie starts, Kyotaro remembers a movie he watched because Yamada starred in it, and tells himself that she's a good actress even though she doesn't know it. Yamada notices his eyes are closed and assumes he's asleep, so she whispers in his ear to wake him up. When he opens his eyes, a kissing scene is playing on the projector and he starts to freak out until he notices Yamada is fully absorbed in it. After the movie, Kiyotaro tells her that he wants to get to know her better, but quickly switches the topic when he realizes that he is beginning to sound like a hopeless romantic. On the day of Yamada's photo shoot, Kiyotaro stops by a convenience store and buys her a cake decorated as a dog. When he arrives, he is surprised to see that the place is empty except for Yamada and the crew, but when she waves at him, he hides away. From his hiding spot, he watches her interaction with the crew and feels out of place, so he runs away. But Yamada finds him and asks if he's feeling okay. He tells her he is, and asks to return to the set, but she thinks it's because he is bored, so she apologizes. She then admits that she doesn't think she is the right person for her job because there are people more talented than she is. However, the day he asked if she liked her job, she realized that she was happy with what she did. Kyotaro realized he was being selfish by not considering how she felt and wondered what her life would be like if she quit her job. Suddenly, he grabbed her hand and they ran back to the set because he concluded that her job was an important part of her life. At the set, Yamada introduced him to her manager and the other members of the crew, including a cover model named Nico, who looked intimidating but turned out to be a softie. During the shoot, Yamada's manager tries to give him the relationship speech, saying that Yamada is progressing in her career, and that being with him would drag her down, but Kyotaro assures him that they are just friends. Later that day, while on their way home from the shoot, Kyotaro shows Yamada a picture he took of her, and she tells him that if he wants to take pictures of her, it is better to do so when she looks good. However, Kyotaro says she looks pretty in the photo causing her to break into a wide grin. The next day at school, their class teacher asks Kiyotaro to read the farewell speech for their graduation class, but he refuses. Yamada happens to overhear the conversation and says it would be a good idea, but Kiyotaro insists that a loser NPC like him is the wrong choice. Just then, Yamada's friends arrive and Moeko says Kiyotaro is the best candidate because he is the second top student in their class. Kiyotaro argues that giving the speech isn't about grades, so the teacher tells him to think about it and says they will be rehearsing the next day. Yamada gives Kiyotaro a hopeful look, so he tells the teacher he will help with the rehearsals until someone else volunteers. At the assembly the next day, Kiyotaro goes on stage to give the rehearsal speech, but the moment he looks at the audience, he chickens out and reads the script in a very low voice. After the assembly, the teacher asks why he was nearly audible, and Kiyotaro tells him the sound system was busted. When he leaves the gym, Yamada pulls him along with her, saying she is going to help him with voice practice. She takes him to the storage room, and after he reads her the speech, she applauds him, but asks why he never told her about his class ranking. Kyotaro tells her it's not a big deal, and gives her a quote about how they were only small steps in life. Yamada then tells him that she wants to encourage him the same way he did when he came to see her work. The next moment, they hear the sound of someone approaching, so they hide. From their spot, they hear a girl confess her feelings to Nanjo, who turns her down because he has feelings for Yamada. Nice. Yamada says nothing, but Kyotaro starts feeling insecure, so he tells her that he'll give the farewell speech so he can prove himself to her. Later that night, he tries to practice the speech in front of his mother but gets distracted by her intense staring, making him wonder where his overconfident self had disappeared to. The next moment, his sister bursts into the room and starts to rub some ointment on his brook-like chest. <laughs> but he pulls away and asks his mother for some money to get a haircut. After making his hair appointment, Kana finds him making a flowchart for conversations with his stylist. But on the day of the appointment, he says nothing and lets the stylist pick his hairstyle. On the day of the graduation, Yamada notices his haircut, and when her friends join them, Serena asks if he has put any wax on it but he has no idea what she's talking about. Serena then borrows some from Adachi and gives Kiyotaro a pompadour, making him look like a cliché delinquent. <laughs> but Yamada changes it. Before the girls leave, they notice Chi is quiet, so they ask her what the problem is, 
and she tells them that they will change classes again when they start their third year. Serena then tells her not to worry because they only separated troublemakers, and Moeko says they are model students. After they leave, Yamada holds Kiptaro's face in her hands and says they might not be in the same class, but he assures her that they will be fine just as the teacher comes to inform them that the ceremony is about to begin. Before making his way to the gym, Kyotaro decides to go through his speech one last time, but realizes he left it at home, so he calls Kana and asks her to bring it. Yamada finds him after he makes the call and asks if there is a problem, but because he doesn't want to seem like a failure before her, he tells her everything is all right. However, she comes closer and tells him that everything will be fine before handing her keychain to him for good luck. Meanwhile, Kana is trying her best to be fast and furious so she can get to the school on time, but she doesn't know the way to the school. Luckily, her co-worker meets her along the way and offers to show her the correct way since he attended the school. At the school, Kyotaro tries to tell the teacher that he can't do the speech, but the man pushes him on stage and thanks him for helping. As Kyotaro makes his way to the podium, Nigorikawa materializes and gives him a pep talk, so by the time he disappears, Kyotaro feels more confident and gives a speech that would make Martin Luther King proud. After the speech, Kyotaro walks off the stage, but ends up fainting in his teacher's arms and later wakes up in the nurse's office. Yamada comes to speak with him, but they get interrupted by Nanjo, who says he needs to speak with Yamada, so Kyotaro gives her keychain back to her and says he wants to sleep some more. While they are speaking, Kyotaro pretends to be asleep, but hears Nanjo confess his feelings to Yamada, after which he asks her to take the button from his uniform. Yamada refuses, saying she can't accept his feelings because she likes someone else, and it is at that moment that the dense Kyotaro realizes that he is the one she likes. Nanjo accepts his rejection and leaves, but as he stands outside talking to Moeko and Mita, Kyotaro walks out of the nurse's office, surprising three of them. Nanjo asks why he wasn't using the chance to woo Yamada, but before he can respond, she opens the door looking red-faced and walks away. Later that night, Kyotaro finds his family watching the video Kana made while he was giving his speech and takes the phone from her. Kana then tells him that she will help him practice how to confess his feelings to a girl, making him wonder if she had heard Yamada's confession earlier. The next day at school, he tries to pretend everything is okay and not behave like a creep, but when he overhears Chi invite Yamada to a karaoke bar with the basketball team, he becomes curious. Later in the day, he sees Yamada and the basketball team outside, and when he realizes that the guys are going as well, his spider senses start to tingle. When they leave, he turns into an MI6 agent and follows them to the karaoke bar, while trying to convince himself that he isn't acting like a creepy stalker. Inside the team's karaoke room, they try to get Yamada to sing a song, but because she has the same appetite as Goku, she keeps eating and doesn't take the mic. Meanwhile, Kyotaro is watching them from the door, and the moment he tries to leave, he bumps into three girls from the team, and they drag him into their room. Yamada is surprised to see him, and Chi asks why he had come, but Kyotaro doesn't answer because he freaks out and runs back to his karaoke room. While he is scolding himself for being so dumb, Yamada comes into the room and asks if he has followed her. Kyotaro immediately blurts out that he hadn't, but screams in his head thinking he had screwed things up. Yamada then shyly asks him if he heard her confession the previous day, and admits that she avoided him the entire day because she had gotten worked up thinking about it. Not wanting to make things more awkward than they already were, Kyotaro changes the subject and admits that he felt jealous seeing her with the basketball guys. He then turns away from her and apologizes, but Yamada smiles and begins to poke him until they realize they are being watched. Soon enough, Kyotaro finds himself in the basketball team's karaoke room, singing a song for a very attentive audience. The next day at school, Hara finds Kyotaro in the library and tells him she has something important to tell him, and as he wonders what it is, he notices Yamada watching him like a creep. Hara also notices her, and invites the both of them to go on a date with her and Kanzaki, but the two awkward lovebirds start acting shy. Yamada says it would be weird if they tagged along, but Hara tells them that Kanazaki was the one who suggested they all go together. Kyotaro tries to make up an excuse not to go, so Hara whispers to him that the day of the date will be White Day, which makes him walk away. On the day of the date, Kyotaro meets Hara on the train and tells her that he has no idea what to get Yamada for White Day, so she offers to go shopping with him. At the mall, 
Hara notices some hats that are on sale, so she puts one on and asks if buying Yamada a hat will be nice. Unfortunately, the moment he says it would look cute, Yamada arrives. She immediately thinks he is referring to Hara and Kyotaro Kan on wish the earth would swallow him whole when she pointedly asks him if Hara looks cute in the hat. This makes him wonder if she is jealous, but his thoughts are cut short when he notices Kanazaki seething with rage, so he tries to clear up the situation. Later on, they go to a restaurant, and when Kanazaki notices that there is barely any food on Hara's plate, he tells her to order as much food as she wants because he was paying for it, but Hara tells him she isn't very hungry even though her stomach groaned loudly. Kanazaki then admits to Kyotaro that he wanted Yamada to come along because he believes that if Hara sees her eating, she will feel the urge to do the same. When he tries to talk Hara into getting more food, Kyotaro tells him not to force her since it isn't something she wants to do. Kanazaki explains that he is only trying to get her to eat because she always looks happy when she eats, after which he hands Hara a cutlery set as a gift, so she finally agrees to eat. After their meal, Kanazaki tells Kyotaro that Yamada helped him pick out the gift for Hara, but Kyotaro gets jealous because Kanazaki spent time with Yamada, so he tells him to stay away from Yamada because she is his. Coincidentally, Yamada and Hara come out of the bathroom at that moment and she hears what he said, causing her to look at him in shock. But Kyotaro tries to salvage the situation by saying something else. On their way back home, Kanazaki makes mention of Kyotaro's earlier outburst. But Kyotaro says there's no way an ugly troll like him will ever end up with a princess like Yamada. Kanazaki tells him not to think so badly of himself, and Kyotaro removes the focus from his love life by asking Kanazaki, when he would ask Hara to be his girlfriend. Kanazaki admits that he has already asked her, but Hara doesn't believe he is being serious. Before Kyotaro can say anything, Hara interrupts them, saying Yamada is missing. She then suggests they split up and look for her, but Kyotaro knows she's trying to play Cupid. So when she leaves with Kanazaki, Yamada appears from nowhere and pulls him along with her. Later that evening, Kyotaro summons the courage to give Yamada the muffin he made for her and she is more than happy to snack on it. But when he tells her to take her time, she notices the bracelet he has hidden in it. Yamada takes it out and stares at it in silence, making Kyotaro feel she doesn't like it. So he stands up and begins to walk away. Yamada goes after him and asks him to put it on for her, and after he does it, he tells her she looks cute, which makes her so happy that she begins to cry. The next Monday after school while walking with Adachi, Kyotaro notices that he is holding a gift box, so he asks why he still hasn't given it to Moeko. Adachi points out that White Day fell on a weekend, but admits that he isn't sure she would like his gift. Kyotaro reminds him that the chocolate he received was the same one every other guy in their class got, but Adachi insists that his was special because it had a heart. Kyotaro then asks how he plans to give his gift to Moeko, so he explains his plan, which also involves Kyotaro. Adachi says he will place the box in her shoe locker and leave, but Kyotaro will stay behind until Moeko comes and opens the locker. After she sees the gift, Kyotaro will randomly walk by and say he had seen Adachi placing it there. Kyotaro can't believe the simple-minded idiot, but before he can protest, Adachi walks over to Moeko's locker and carelessly puts it in and walks away without closing the locker. Kyotaro rushes to pick up the box but can't remember Moeko's locker. He ends up stashing it in the Yamada's locker just as Moeko and Yamada arrive and see what he had done, so Yamada pulls the gift out of the locker. Moeko takes it from her, and after looking at it, she tells them she's leaving, but Kiyotaro pulls her back and tries to explain himself. Unfortunately, before he can get the words out, they hear a commotion outside, and when they go to see what it is, they find Adachi's mother pulling him towards the door. When they get to the door, she pushes him in front of Moeko and tells him to thank her for the chocolates, which he does, although a bit awkwardly, before leaving with his mother. Moeko then gives the gift back to Yamada, and she pulls out the note to read it. However, since Adachi seems to share the same brain cells as Patrick Starr, the note sounds like something a kid would write. Yamada, on the other hand, reads the note while imagining Kyotaro saying it, and goes red in the face. A week later, their teacher addresses them in the classroom for the year-end ceremony, and Chi comes up with a plan to ensure she and her friends end up in the class the next school year. After the class, she pretends to fight with her friends, and when the teacher comes in, she tells him to make sure she doesn't end up in the same class as them, and he agrees, which is the opposite of what they were hoping for. Later on, Kyotaro receives a message from Yamada, 
so he goes to the gym to meet with her. When he arrives, he tells her that they aren't supposed to be there, but she ignores his warning and challenges him to a game. She then says that the loser of the game has to do what the winner wants, and before Kyotaro can object, she steals the ball and takes a shot, but misses. Kyotaro joins her and the two begin playing. However, Yamada can't seem to make a shot, and when Kyotaro points it out, she tells him she's better at defending, so he switches places with her. Yamada does her best to block his path, but Kyotaro is determined to win, so he tries to get past her and accidentally pushes against her milk jugs. <laughs> he immediately apologizes, but Yamada tries to take the ball from him, so he avoids her and runs to the hoop. As he runs, he tells himself that if he makes the shot, he'll ask her out, so he brings out his inner balling skills and takes the shot. He then watches as the ball starts to fall out of the hoop until Yamada saves it by pushing it back in. Since she was the one to make the basket, Yamada asks Kyotaro if she can refer to him as Kyo, and he tells her she can. Later that day, Kyotaro imagines the different ways Yamada can say Kyo when Nigorikawa materializes and tells him to call her Anna. Before they can continue their discussion, Kana bursts into his room and asks if he has plans for his birthday. He tells her he doesn't because Yamada is busy with work and he has cram school. Kana immediately starts to tease him, saying she never mentioned Yamada's name, so he kicks her out of his room. On his birthday, he meets Yamada at the train station after she gets off work, and as they walk home together, Kyotaro wonders why she hasn't called him Kyo. Before he can say something about it, he begins to feel like they are being followed, and his mind goes into panic mode. As the person gets closer, he jumps in front of Yamada intending to be her knight in shining armor, but when the person steps into the light, he realizes it is his father. He apologizes for spooking them and says he was just on his way home after picking up the cake, which makes Yamada ask what they are celebrating. His father tells her it's Kyotaro's birthday, and when she starts scolding him for not telling her, he invites her to his birthday dinner. When they arrive at his house, Yamada calls her mother to let her know she won't be coming home for dinner. After that, they sit at the table for dinner. But Kana makes Kyotaro wear funny-looking glasses so she can take pictures of him. While they were eating, Kyotaro's mother asks Kana to give Kyotaro the present she bought for him, and by the time she gives it to him, Kyotaro starts freaking out because it's a figurine of a female video game character, wearing a Playboy outfit. Soon, it was time for cake, and after he blew the candles out, Yamada whispered, Happy birthday, Kyo, in his ear. By the time his sister turns the lights back on, they find Kyotaro lying on the floor looking very much like the undead. Later on, Kana suggests that Yamada spend the night when their mother comes to inform them that it's getting later. So Yamada calls her mother and allows Kyotaro's mother to speak with her. Meanwhile, Kiyotaro starts pacing around because he is secretly freaked out about Yamada spending the night. He tries to calm himself, saying both she and Kana will spend the night together, but he is shocked to find Kana snoring on the stairs. She hands him some clothes to give to Yamada, and goes right back to La La Land so he goes to drop off the clothes. When he enters the bathroom, he tells Yamada about the change of clothes and turns to leave, but she stops him, asking if he has any rubber. Kyotaro's mind immediately goes on alert, but she explains that she needs it to tie her hair up since she left hers on the sink. Kyotaro then picks up the hair tie and tries to drop it on the floor, but Yamada opens the door to take it. Later that night, Kyotaro finds Yamada reading a script, so he joins her and they begin to talk. While they are speaking, she tells him the script is about a rebellious teenager and admits that she's not sure she can play the part. Kyotaro then gives her some advice, and as a way to thank him, she pulls him in for a hug. A little while later, she falls asleep, and when Kyotaro realizes he's staring at her like a creep, he pulls the blankets over her and leaves. My Riz Demons If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and check out one of these two other videos. Also, if you want to get that shredded anime physique, click the link in the description below.